Hello students, let's talk about heterotrophic nutrition today. Each organism is adapted to its environment. The form of nutrition differs depending on the type of availability of food material as well as how it is obtained by the organism. For example, whether the food source is stationary such as grass or mobile such as deer would allow for differences in how the food is accessed and what is the nutritive apparatus used by a cow and a lion. There is a range of strategies by which the food is taken in and used by the organism. Some organisms break down the food material outside the body and then absorb it. Break down the food outside the body and absorb it. This is called extracellular digestion. Extracellular digestion. Examples are fungi like bread molds, yeast and mushrooms. Others take in the whole material and break it down inside the body. This is what we say is holozoic nutrition. This is also extracellular only, but this is holozoic mode of nutrition. What can be taken in and broken down depends on the body design and functioning. Some other organisms derive nutrition from plants and animals without killing them. This is called parasitic nutritive strategy. This is used by a wide variety of organisms like cascuta, amarbale, ticks, mites, lice, leeches and even tapeworms. These are all parasites. Parasite. How do organisms obtain their nutrition? Since the food and the weight is obtained differ, the digestive system is different in various organisms. In single celled organisms, the food may be taken in by the entire surface, but as the complexity of the organism increases, different parts become specialized to perform different functions. For example, amoeba takes in food using temporary finger like extensions of the cell surface which fuse over the food particle forming a food vacuole as in the this diagram. Uh, what is being shown here is that amoeba when it senses food particle somewhere nearby it increases the uh, this cell membrane pushes the cell membrane towards that food and encloses it and this in the future becomes the food vacuole. Inside the food vacuole, complex substances are broken down into simpler forms which, when, which then diffuse into the cytoplasm. The remaining undigested material is removed to the surface of the cell and thrown out. Thrown out. This type of nutrition is called intracellular, this type of digestion is called intracellular digestion. The intake of food is called endocytosis. And whatever is the remain, suppose there is something remain within this, so that will be thrown out from this side and this is what we say is the exocytosis. Food is removed, food is moved to this spot by the movement of cilia which cover, okay. In paramecium which is also a unicellular organism, the cell has a definite shape and the food is taken in at a specific point. Food is moved to this spot by the movement of cilia which covers the entire surface. Let us see how it happens in paramecium. Paramecium you know is a ciliate and it has got cilia all over the body like this. But this is the point, this one which is called the cytopharynx and food is taken in only through this point which will be forming a food vacuole here. The food vacuole is digested over here. And finally, the undigested food will be thrown out through the cytopyge. We call it as cytopyge or the cell anus. So, th this is the point where the food will be thrown out. So, it can be taken in only at a point called cytopharynx or the gullet, and it has to be thrown out only from a certain point. That is specifically to paramecium. Okay, let us see how it happens in human beings, nutrition in human beings. We have an elementary canal and this elementary canal is basically a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus. We call it as a complete mouth tract, complete digestive tract. We can see that the tube has a different part. Look into this diagram. The tube has different parts starting from the mouth, esophagus. Then there is a stomach, 
small intestine this one and then there is a large intestine which fuses with a small at the point called cecum this is a large intestine and finally the food is undigested food is thrown out via the anus let us see what happens to the food once it enters the body we shall discuss this process here now before going into that let us see there is an activity and that how the uh, starch is digested even within our mouth in the oral cavity let us take 1 ml starch solution 1 percent in 2 test tubes a and b add 1 ml saliva to the test tube a and leave both test tubes undisturbed for 20 to 30 minutes now add a few drops of dilute iodine solution to the test tubes in which test tube do we observe a color change what does this indicate about the presence or absence of starch in the two test tubes what does this tell about the action of saliva in the starch now when we are taken starch in two test tubes and in one we have added saliva and the other you can keep it as control there is no saliva added now after some time when we will be going for the starch test starch test means just add iodine solution so if the one that is having starch still will be showing the blue black color suppose this is a and this is b so the a, a will be digesting the in this a test tube the saliva will be digesting the starch and it will be converted to maltose but in the second one because this has no enzyme so this will be still showing the process this will be still undertaking the starch test positive because there is no digestion of starch it just contains starch but because yahapi in this starch is digested into maltose so there will be a negative test negative starch test okay let's come back to the digestive system we eat various types of food which has to be passed through the same digestive tract naturally the food has to be processed to generate particles which are small and of the same texture this is achieved by crushing the food within with our teeth so teeth basically are for mastication or chewing since the lining of canal is soft the food is also wetted to make it passage smooth so what is the function of saliva here saliva not only contains enzyme salivary amylase but it also helps in lubrication by wetting the food when we eat something we like our we like our mouth waters this is actually not only water but a fluid called saliva secreted by the salivary glands another aspect of food we ingest is its complex nature if it is to be absorbed from the alimentary canal it has to be broken down into smaller molecule this is done with the help of biological catalyst called enzymes so what is happening is when we eat the food it is a it is the complex food it has to be converted to into simpler forms let us see what is a complex food complex food means the molecules are in large number and that is all bonded together but when we say they are simpler so they are just the bonds are broken and they are in the simpler form and for this we need some enzymes these are nothing but the biological catalyst and the process is called digestion this what is actually digestion the saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that break down starch which is complex molecule to give sugars sugar like maltose isomaltose the food is mixed thoroughly with saliva and moved around the mouth while chewing it by the muscular tongue it is necessary to move the food in a regulated manner along the digestive tube so that it can be processed properly in each part the lining of the canal has muscles that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward these, these peristaltic movements occur all through the gut so these movements are nothing but called the these are like this suppose we have the food here so this has to be moved forward by the contraction of the muscles in both the ways the circular as well as the longitudinal and the food will be pushed towards the this side and this is what we say is a peristaltic movement this is all because of the muscles circular muscles and the longitudinal muscles present in the digestive tract from the mouth the food is taken to the stomach through the food pipe to esophagus 
The stomach is a large organ which expands when food enters it. The muscular walls of the stomach helps in mixing the food thoroughly with more digestive juices. These di digest digestion functions are taken care of by the gastric glands, gastric glands present in the wall of stomach. These release hydrochloric acid, a protein digestive enzyme called pepsin and mucus. So there are three things that are secreted from the gastric lining, what? Gastric juice and this gastric juice contains three things, HCL, pepsin and enzyme and mucus. Hydrochloric acid creates an acidic medium which facilitates the action of enzyme pepsin. What other functions do you think is served by the acid? What else it will be doing? It will be killing germs. The mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions. We, we have often heard adults complaining about acidity. Can this be related to what we have been discussing? Yes, it is acid more secreted in the stomach. The exit of food from the stomach is regulated by a sphincter muscles. Which releases, which releases it in small amounts into the small intestine. From the stomach, the food now enters into the small intestine. This is the longest part of the alimentary canal which is fitted into a compact space because of the extensive coiling. The length of the small intestine differs in various animals depending on the food they eat. Herbivores eating grass need a longer small intestine to allow the cellulose to be digested. Meat is easier to digest, hence the carnivores like tigers have a sh shorter small intestine. The small intestine is the site of complete digestion of the carbohydrates, proteins and fats. It receives the secretions of the liver, the pancreas for this purpose. The food coming from the stomach is acidic and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act. Bile juice from the liver accomplishes this in addition to acting on fats. Fats are present in the intestine in the form of large globules which make, f make it difficult for enzymes to act upon them. Bile salts break them into smaller globules increasing the efficiency of enzyme action. This is similar to the emulsifying action of soap on dirt that we have learnt in about chapter 4. This is called emulsification. So what is emulsification? Emulsification is the breaking down of a large globule of fat into smaller ones. Not only this because bile contains some salts, so they will be just coating these molecules, particles by bile salts. This is what we say is emulsification. Now th these can be acted upon by enzyme lipase and this will be now converted into fatty acids and glycerols ready to be absorbed by the elementary canal. The walls of small intestine contain glands which secrete intestinal juice. The enzymes present in it finally convert the proteins into amino acid, complex carbohydrate into glucose and fats and, fat, uh, and glucose and fats into fatty acids and glycerol. So finally what is happening is all the carbohydrates, carbohydrates they are converted into glucose and other simpler forms, proteins into amino acids and fats into fatty acids and glycerol and this what we say is digestion is completed. The digested food is taken up by the walls of intestine. The inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger like projections called villi which increases the surface area of absorption. What are villi? Within the intestine there will be some these kind of inner folds. These are called these are called villi. Now each cell will further will be having some micro villi like this. These are called micro villi or brush border. The villi are richly supplied with blood vessels which take, a, take the absorbed food to each and every cell of the body. 
where it is utilized for obtaining energy, building up new tissues and repair of old tissues. The unabsorbed food is sent to the large intestine where more villi absorb water, absorb water only in the large intestine. The rest of the material is removed from the body by the anus. The, this, the exit of this waste material is regulated by a sphincter again.